Well, I think one of the great things about the club is we've got a lot of very avid golfers and some very good golfers that are members here. But it's, it's a driving golf course, in my opinion. Uh, small greens, old traditional small greens, tight fairways, uh, a lot of uh, shoots where the, the trees have kind of grown in over, you know, naturally. Uh, but you got to drive the ball well. So all the stars aligned today. I landed a tee time at the Olympic Club. And when you play here, five-time U.S. Open host, even if you're not playing in the U.S. Open, there's a good chance you're going to be playing with some serious sticks. My host today, John Abendroth, longtime Olympic Club member, and his son, Michael, also a longtime member. John used to play on the PGA Tour in the 70s. He's now 67. We expect him to shoot his age. We are on the par five first hole, although in the U.S. Open, the last U.S. Open, it played as a par four. More than 500 yards for everyday Joes like us. We'll play it as a par five, right guys? Sure. All right, par five, let's see how it goes. Well, when you're out here on the western fringes of San Francisco where the Olympic Club is, you are out in golf country. They've cleared out trees here over the years, and now you get a view across Lake Merced. See those fairways over there? That's Harding Park, a municipal course, TPC Harding Park now. They'll be, they'll be hosting PGA Championship there in August. So we are in Championship Golfville here. You know, it's interesting. The par five has always been considered a, a great, sort of easy opening hole for the members. But when they converted that to a par four, uh, for the professionals and then the U.S. amateur players, uh, the first six holes are really brutal. That's par for the course, as it were. One of the things you hear often about what makes the Olympic Club so tough is that there are holes where it doglegs one way and the fairway cants the other. We've come to one of those, prime example, the par four fourth. Doglegs left, and we'll see it in a little bit. The fairway banks the other way. John, how, how do you play this hole? Well, tee shot wise, you want to hit a hopefully a draw because you got the traditional wind that comes off the ocean, which is only probably a thousand yards away. And, and so with the way the hill is set up and the way the wind blows, that you want to hit a little bit of a draw. This has traditionally been one of the, the toughest holes, handicap wise on the golf course, uh, all sorts of activity here. So uh, it's how, a challenge. How does it receive a, a snap hook? Is it like that? Well, so long as it's controlled. Okay, I'm gonna, you can talk to a snap hook I've heard. That's right. All right. You can see what I was hitting to right here, this fairway, the dog leg left, it bends up the hill, the fairway cants hard to the right. I actually strangely caught the perfect lie, or took the perfect line. Ball bounded down, rolled out in the fairway on the right, and I have a nice shot in. We're on the par four fifth, another in a succession of really difficult par fours. This one, another one that dog legs one way to the fairway that cants the other, right? But that's not the only unusual thing about this hole, right, John? Yeah, Josh, I want you to see this hole because uh, the two, the two sides here, the trees, creates one of these chutes, as I like to call it. And over the years, that's been a historic part of the Olympic Club. And almost all of our holes had these at one point, but the age of the trees, you know, we've lost a lot of them. And then this hole is famous for uh, Lee Jansen in one US Open and Lee Westwood in another, where balls hung up in the trees and had a, uh, a major effect on their score. My drive here on five found the right side, and one of the challenges on this hole are these overhanging trees. Uh, dog leg right. If you remember, if you know your history, you might remember that in 1998 at the US Open, the fourth round, final round, Lee Jansen's ball nested up, not in this tree, that tree is now gone, but in a tree like this one, the ball nested up top. He was walking back to the tee box to reload when his ball dropped out of the tree branches. So a huge moment in that event. Here's where I am. You can see I'm kind of locked out. For you history buffs, is this ring a bell? Ball on a divot on the 12th hole at the Olympic Club, 1998. Payne Stewart in a final round duel with Lee Jansen. It's a perfect drive that winds up in a divot. He was fuming, I don't know if you remember. But from there, put in the bunker, made bogey a big turning point in the match. It's the shot I have right now. Playing it just like the pros, right into that bunker. Coming up 18, the final hole here, a par four. You can see it plays uphill to a very small green. Another story about this hole is 
the bunker formation here, the story is that they, the bunkers spell out IOU, sort of wrapping up the round, closing out your bets. You can see this little U shape here. Whether that was intended in the original design, that's dubious, but over the years, the members have taken up that story. So if you're a gambler and you're coming down 18, IOU has a sort of a sense of portent and foreshadowing. Who owes who? That's to be determined. Got to the 18th green here. Years ago, this was more severely sloped back to front, narrower. It's still a small green, but it was smaller then. Payne Stewart in 98, we've brought up his name a few times already. Second, more severely sloped. Put it this way and... Well, my putt dropped, Payne Stewart's didn't. <laughs>